This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got a rematch, the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup final coming up on Wednesday between the USA and Netherlands. They're going to face off on Wednesday. We're going to break down that match, talk about takeaways from the U.S.'s win over Vietnam, and just talk in general takeaways from the opening weekend of the Women's World Cup by talking to Dr. Ed Feng today and getting his insights on what he's seen thus far. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital content for a fan. Dual Research, joined here as mentioned by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work over at thepowerrank.com. Check him out on Twitter at the Power Rank as well. And Ed, one weekend of action is in the books. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. I uh, had a nice weekend of luck. So I uh, can't complain. Absolutely. Getting some soccer back in our lives. Uh, some fun international soccer. Got to watch most of that game against Vietnam back on Friday. Obviously not as dominant of a win for the U.S. as I think the betting markets at least were expecting. Ed, it sounds like you were more in line with uh, what wound up happening there. We'll talk about that game here in a second to break down thoughts on that one. But first, a quick reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, Wherever you get your podcasts, you can find us. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Also, do not forget that all these shows do go up over on the fans' YouTube page and over on FanDuel TV+. Plus. But I want to talk about that USA versus Vietnam game here in a second, Ed. But let's begin things by talking about general takeaways from this first week. And we've seen a good number of matches out there. Any big takeaways for you from what you've seen thus far? For sure. I feel like Spain played pretty well. I watched, uh, you know, the first 30 minutes of their game they, uh, against, against who? Against someone that wasn't, Costa Rica. Against someone yeah. that really probably shouldn't have been on the same field as them. I thought they looked really good. This is a team that doesn't necessarily have all their top women at this World Cup, but kind of didn't matter. Actually, their top player, uh, Alexis Pateas, was, was actually not playing in that first 30 minutes. Uh, they managed to score three goals. Uh, they had 4.6 XG, which is about the same as the U.S. women had. So I thought Spain looked pretty good. Uh, I thought Sweden looked pretty good. Uh, this is a team that, uh, you know, I mean, they were down one nothing to South Africa, needed two goal, late goals to come back. So uh, I like that I have, uh, what, 18-1 to for Sweden uh, to win. I'm not sure they win, but wouldn't be surprised at all if they made it all the way to the final. I did not see Germany last night, but six nothing is, is clearly a pretty good scoreline. Uh, Alexandra Pop, Alexandra Pop had two goals, and so I'm loving that. Obviously, because sixteen one for her for the Golden Boot uh, is pretty nice. Um, you know, the XG wasn't as as big for the Germans, but still, you know, they 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 put a pretty good number on Morocco. Their group is not Pop can just get two goals for uh, every group stage match. I would uh, I would not be unhappy at all yeah what you referenced there was our discussion from last week we talked about futures markets and you mentioned alexander pop to win the golden boot at 16 to 1 as sweden was 18 to 1 at the time to win the women's world cup and uh again like you mentioned the comeback victory for them germany was plus 750 those are the three futures ed was zeroing in on before our discussion uh before the first group play events got underway this past week now you mentioned the xg for sweden and talking about them let's talk about them compared to the U.S. because the U.S. was taking on Vietnam, and you mentioned the XG potentially better for the U.S. than the actual result there. They did win three nothing over Vietnam, and if you look at the betting markets where the total goals was massively high, you said under six and a half, which was minus one twelve at that time. Obviously, a three nil victory does not live up to that. Does not live up to what we saw last time those two teams played. But it sounds like based on expected goals, maybe they're better than the result. But I want to ask you, Ed, overall, what was what do you think is a fair assessment of the U.S.'s first win over Vietnam? Right. I mean, I didn't think they played particularly well towards the beginning of the game. Uh, I kind of expected them to come out and basically physically overmatch Vietnam. That was not the case at all. Uh, early in the game, they were kind of chucking a lot of long balls over the top, which I did not find particularly impressive. 
I think their play got better towards the end. Uh, they put together some good offensive uh, and some passing towards the later, latter part of the game. Uh, they hit the crossbar. Easily could have been four or five, nothing. Uh, four and a half XG, uh, according to, to football ref, uh, which is which is good. Um, Vietnam literally had zero. So they certainly did fine on that side of the ball, but maybe that's kind of expected uh, against, you know, uh, you know, one of the lesser teams probably at this World Cup. But I did think it was interesting. I mean, I, I don't watch a ton of women's soccer, and I, I don't know if I should expect the U.S. to physically dominate another team at this World Cup, but but they didn't. And uh, so that'll be interesting going forward because because I, I certainly think the European teams are probably more skilled than the U.S., so we'll see how the balance of, of kind of athleticism versus skill kind of comes out uh, towards the later part of this tournament yeah and i think that i agree with you where especially early it did seem to be not quite what we were expecting they did seem to ramp things up a bit as the game went along and it seemed like from, from a possession perspective there weren't a lot of serious threats on the opposing end so i don't know if cruise control is a way to phrase it but it kind of felt that way as if like it's like a Max Verstappen win in Formula One where you don't need to put the the foot all the you know your foot all the way down for the entire race. And the US kind of felt like they were they allowed themselves to take things a bit easier throughout that match because they knew it might not be the biggest test. They could save themselves for this Wednesday match against the Netherlands. Would that be a too optimistic viewpoint of it in your eyes? Oh, uh, maybe not. I mean, honestly, going into the match, I kind of thought the U.S. would put kind of put their foot on the jugular, which was the only thing that was worrying me about under six and a half goals, under six and a half total goals. You know, would the U.S. get there? Because I didn't think they let up. Uh, did they let up? I don't know. I mean, it, I, I just felt like the the match was hard. Uh, yeah. They feel in general Vietnam played pretty well. Um, you can't really see that in the XG, but if you watched, like I thought they played well. They I thought they defended well. So um yeah, I think you know, to be determined with with the women with the US women, and we'll certainly learn a lot more on Wednesday. We certainly will. So let's talk about that match here because we do have the USA taking on the Netherlands again, a a rematch of the 2019 World Cup final. And right now we do see the US as a favorite here. Their money line is minus 145 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. The Netherlands is plus 400. The tie is plus 260 right now. Looking at the total goals market here. Over under on two and a half goals is currently the over plus 112, the under minus 144. So we've seen some movement towards the under in this match, and we've seen some movement a bit towards the United States money line. So when you look at this matchup, what are you expecting in this game between the U.S. and Netherlands? Right. So I actually ran some numbers on this and assuming that the U.S. and the Netherlands play on a neutral site, this is based on major tournaments since the last World Cup. We have some pretty decent data on the U.S. and a lot of the top European teams. So, you know, what, what it actually said was that the U.S. has about a 47 percent chance to win. And then it's not really surprising that the um, it's not really surprising that their probability, their mar the markets are higher on the U.S. Netherlands has a pretty key injury to uh, Viviane Medima. So, uh, you know, this is a woman that has uh, 95 goals and 115 caps. Uh, you kind of just don't replace that too easily. So, uh, so not surprising that the markets are ahead of my model. Um, I also looked at XG. I looked at XG. So we have XG data based on the last World Cup and then also Euro. And so that should be pretty, a pretty decent sample size on the Dutch um, and less so for the U.S. Uh, but just to give you a sense, that said, the U.S. had a 74 percent chance to win. So I think we're seeing a little bit of a small sample size effect there. Uh, just not enough data on the Netherlands. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what lineups that they had actually played in the last World Cup uh, versus Euro last year. Uh, but the XG favored the U.S. a little bit more. Obviously, I think it makes more sense when you have more data. Um, with with just the uh, match results from the, from the major tournaments, I think that calculation kind of makes sense. I think the U.S. should be a little bit more favored due to the injury situation. Um, you know, I don't really have a bet on this. It looks like the markets have gone towards the U.S. Uh, it looks like the markets have gone towards the under. Uh, U.S. is better defensively than they are offensively when I, when I look at the data. 
Um, and so, yeah, you know, you kind of expect a, a low scoring game, maybe one, nothing us, two, nothing us. Um, that's, that's the kind of game I expect it to be. I watched a little bit of the Dutch. I thought they were good. Um, I, I think they're actually pretty similar to the men in that it's a pretty skilled team. They're certainly going to whip the ball around, uh, the field, very skilled, don't really have a woman that's going to put the ball away, uh, a top goal scorer and, uh, very similar to the men. And so, uh, you know, probably not a prime contender to win this cup. Uh, they're, they're, their, their, their pre-flop odds before the tournament were pretty low compared to the other teams. I think the U.S. should be able to win this match and um, and then look to move on to the knockout phase. Okay, so it sounds like the markets make sense, at least where they're at, even if they are a bit more aggressive than what Ed's numbers have. We can understand why that discrepancy may occur based on health and things like that. Any other bets you like in this game, Ed? USA versus Netherlands in the less traditional markets? Yeah, this one's been tough, Jim. Um, I, I I don't really. I think the money line's about right. Uh, I do expect a low scoring game, and a lot of these low scoring games, uh, you tend. I, I like to bet uh, even number of total goals. And for the men's World Cup at DraftKings, like they had minus one ten on both sides, even odd, no matter what yeah. match it was for the World Cup. It was the most sublime thing ever. I don't know if you remember, but I definitely had I uh, even total goals in the final. France versus Argentina, which was uh, even with the chaos of that game, that that felt good the entire time, uh, and it won. So uh, you should really lean towards even total goals. Uh, unfortunately, DraftKings has, has both decided to increase the juice on it um, and actually are leaning a little bit towards even. So it's like minus 120 to, to the even. Um so yeah, not a ton of value there, which is it's just a little disappointing that they they actually got off their rear end and, and <laughs> fixed that. But you know, I mean, I, I see maybe a zero zero game, maybe one zero US game, uh, kind of a low scoring game. If you kind of want to have fun, you know, I think uh, first goal score and any time goal score should be probably more similar than than they should should be. So you know, maybe an Alex Morgan first goal score because because that might be the only goal. Um, so, uh, I, I haven't bet it, but if you're desperate to bet something, I would probably go something like Alex Morgan first goal score. She's currently plus three forty right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. No goal score is seven to one as well. If you want an Alex Morgan anytime goal, that is plus one thirty right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook as an option there as well. I, there is no, uh, even, uh, even odd number of goals bets over at FanDuel. And I feel like we know who to blame, uh, for increased juice in those markets at the men's world cup. So you lost the market, but it might have been because you did too well previously. So I feel like you got to take on some of the blame there uh, when it comes to the the takeaway of that market at other sports books. What about other stuff you're seeing right now? Looking at other matches, futures markets, whatever it may be, anything else that has piqued your interest so far that you may want to lock in before these next uh, rounds of games get underway? I thought it was particularly interesting that Japan had 6.5 XG against Zambia. And you might think, oh, that's just a minnow that they destroyed. Uh, Zambia beat Germany in a friendly before this World Cup. So I'm, I'm very interested to see what we can get out of the Japanese women. Um, you know, it was not a team that the numbers particularly liked coming into this tournament. But I think that performance kind of... Uh, uh, makes me, you know, want to watch their next match and 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 see how good they really are. Um, so that that was something that that I'm interested in. Um, you know, I'm I'm oh, and they play Costa Rica and Costa Rica is, is not is not good. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then, you know, as as far as other matches, I'm kind of waiting a little while until so that there's some more competitive matches like U.S. Netherlands. We might have to wait a little while. And, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll keep you up to date on what's going on. Yeah. That Japan versus Costa Rica game is coming up 1 PM East or 1 AM Eastern on Wednesday morning or late Tuesday night. If you want to watch it that way, instead, Japan versus Costa Rica, Japan's money line minus 2,100 after that uh, big win over Zambia as well. So interested to see what they can do in that one and see if we can get another contender in the mix for the world cup. 
That's all we have for World Cup for today. I'm going to go through uh, recapping last week's bet here in just one second. But Ed, first of all, I want to thank you for swinging by for today, running the numbers for us. We're going to be back again on Thursday, not just to recap that U.S. versus Netherlands matchup, but also we're going to talk some college football futures because college football season is just around the corner. So, Ed, it was a delight to have you on the show for today. People are looking for uh, Five Nuggets Saturday, trying to find your work in general. Where can they find that right now? Thanks so much, Jim. Yeah, you can find all my work at thepowerrank.com. Definitely sign up for the newsletter. Uh, Five Nuggets Saturday is my curated list of sports betting tips uh, and analytics. Uh, I try to I try to do a little handicapping in there, even off season. But um, the important thing is looking at other people, stuff like your work in NASCAR, Jim. Um, trying to find uh, people that you should be listening to. So ch- check out Five Nuggets Saturday. You can get that at thepowerrank.com. All righty. Well, thank you so much, Ed. We'll talk to you once again Thursday to talk some college football, talk some women's World Cup as well. Find Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank, and again, find his work over at thepowerrank.com. As mentioned, we're going to dive into recapping what we talked about last week here on the show, recapping the bets recommended, and much more here in just one second. But first, we got some exciting news over at Number Fire. Beginning now, you can find all the Number Fire content from the analysts you know over at a new home called FanDuel Research. FanDuel Research is on the FanDuel domain, meaning you you can now do your own research on the same site where you place bets and submit daily fantasy lineups. And don't worry, all the number fire tools are still in place over at numberfire.com. So your daily process can remain the same for right now. As a thank you for your years of loyalty, we'll be running free rolls over on FanDuel Research now through the end of NFL season to check out this week's free play for the Women's World Cup, talking that USA versus Netherlands matchup. Go to the Welcome to FanDuel Research article over on FanDuel Research, and be sure to check out all the great content while you are there. Again, that's fanduel.com slash research to find all the great content again. From a podcast perspective, nothing changes. Uh, You can still find all these posts over on FanDuel Research. You can find the the podcast feeds are the exact same, including the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed, still up over on the FanDuel YouTube page, still up on FanDuel TV+. Plus. So from a podcast perspective, nothing's different. The content will all be the same, just in a new home over at FanDuel Research. Check it all out at FanDuel.com slash research. Let's dig in now and recap last week's recommendations here on the show. As we discussed with Ed, his Women's World Cup bet last week was an under six and a half goals for the USA against Vietnam. The under there was minus 112, and it wound up being 3 nil. So we talked about how unders can be pretty rough sweats in the shell. This one really was not. Looked pretty good from start to finish, and it did cash there. So great call by Ed on that one. Again, check him out on Twitter at the Power Rank. Find his work at thepowerrank.com. Brandon Gadula was our guest for the Open Championship. You can find Brandon on Twitter at Gadula13. Brian Harmon got the win in the Open Championship by six strokes. Bananas showing by Brian Harmon there. Brandon's outrights were on Patrick Cantlay, 22 to 1, Xander Shoffley, 25 to 1, and Hideki Matsuyama at 65 to 1. Brandon also had Hideki as a top Asian player. That honor went to Tom Kim, who finished in a tie for second place. Hideki was plus 490 in that market, couldn't quite get there. Brandon Grace was Brandon's bet to be the top South African. Grace was plus 320 there, but Louis Westhazen got that via a 23rd place finish. And finally, Brandon had Marcel Seam as the top German at plus 170. Kind of, you know, Brandon thought of like a head-to-head with Thomas Dietrich there. And Seam looked really good Friday and was near the top of the leaderboard at one point. But... Rough Saturday, shot a 74 there. He finished 41st. Uh, Thomas Dietrich was the top German. He finished in 13th. So tough week there. But looking forward to talking to Brandon once again tomorrow about the 3M Open. Finally, I had NASCAR and Formula One this week. NASCAR went great. Formula One did not. I had George Russell the podium at plus 410 and Pierre Gasly top 10 or uh, yeah, George Russell the podium at plus 410 and Pierre Gasly top 10 at minus 120. Both those guys failed to make it to the final round of qualifying. Not ideal. Russell got caught in traffic uh, trying to make a lap, and Gasly had a lap deleted in in, uh, Q2. Then the first lap of the race, Gasly got caught up in an accident, uh, not of his own doing, so did not finish a lap, nor did his teammate Esteban Ocon. Rough day for Alpine. Russell did run pretty well during the race. Uh, It's a track where it's tough to pass, and he did make his way 
up to sixth, but that's not a podium. So a uh, rough day there in Formula One. But NASCAR, as mentioned, went really well. My two bets from the show last week were Eric Jones' top 10 at plus 430 and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. top 10 at 5-1. to one. And both those did wind up cashing. Or cashing. They had to use some strategy to get there, but Stenhouse finished seventh. Jones finished ninth. Held their own toward the end, despite a couple restarts where they probably were not on you know, the ideal strategy to have a bunched up restart, but Hey, they ran well, they cashed those tickets. So happy with that did help make up for, uh, the formula one stuff in the morning. So overall, uh, feeling good about NASCAR, feeling good about formula one, uh, with the move to FanDuel research, I'll actually be posting my formula one simulations over at FanDuel research each week. So you can find those before practice and qualifying each week. If you want a more in depth look at this, you want to use them for, you know, looking for bets that you may like stuff like that. Those will be up each week over on FanDuel Research in case you want to look at uh, win odds, podium odds, top six odds, and top 10 odds. Those are the numbers I will post based on my simulations each and every week. That's all we got here for today, though, on Covering the Spread. Want to give a big thank you once again to Dr. Ed Feng. Find his work at thepowerrank.com and on Twitter at thepowerrank as well. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Don't forget to follow FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research on Twitter. If you followed Numberfire previously, that is now the FanDuel Research account, so you don't need to follow there. Already doing so. Uh, but again, excited about this transition. Excited about uh, getting to post my Formula One Sims, NASCAR Truck Series, NASCAR Xfinity Series on FanDuel Research research so it's going to be a blast uh looking forward to that as always again if any questions you can go to there's a full explanation post over at FanDuel research uh and also just hit me up on twitter at jim Sonis as well if you like what you hear on the podcast side of things make sure you leave us a five-star rating on apple podcast we're on spotify and find all these videos up on FanDuel's youtube page and on FanDuel tv plus want to thank you all for tuning in we'll talk to you once again tomorrow to preview the 3M Open. This has been Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network.